vicious, by the way, too. Her cat is freaking vicious. You know the song? In West, West Philadelphia, Philadelphia. Born, born and raised, raised. on the playground is where I spent most of my days. I'll leave that in the video. Shotgun, aimed at my heart, you got one. Tear me apart and then some. How do we call this love? What's going on folks with nothing better to do? I'm Blogzilla and you're watching the No Judgment Zone. Today I have a lovely young lady with me, Jasmine V. What's up? How are you doing? I'm doing great, how about you? I'm great, can't complain, sitting here next to you, looking all wonderful. Thanks. Uh, you have a hot single you just put out uh, called That's Me Right There, featuring the dope Kent, King, of, King of New York, King of New York, respectively, Kendrick Lamar. Yes. <laughs> uh, how was it working on that song? Where did you come with the idea? Um, well, Originally, when we first did That's Me Right There, there was no feature on it. We didn't, we didn't have an idea or a clue who was going to be on it. So, we recorded the song. We automatically knew it was going to be a single. We loved it. After so many years of trying to figure out my sound, we're like, wow, we, we finally got it. So, we're just sitting down thinking, like, who could we possibly get on the feature that would fit and make sense? Everybody said Kendrick. And I was like, well, I mean, if there's somebody can get him on there, that'd be great. Um, and then one day, they, they said that he was going to get on it. And I was like... I was like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, that's crazy. Like, Kendrick's been working on his own stuff, so he hasn't really been doing anything, like, outside just been MIA creating. I was like, it's gonna be amazing, but I was like, let me wait to see if it really gonna happen. It's really gonna happen. One day at rehearsal, they surprised me. They played the song, and his verse was right there. Wow. So, so when you first heard it, what'd you say? Like, because he, he puts in a little bit of, you know, flair in there for you in it. I was it was funny because all my family and friends had their cameras out recording me and I didn't know what was going on so I was just sitting, sitting there like this is weird like why is everybody recording me and when the verse came out I was stuck for like the whole verse I was like <laughs> I was like what but you've been through a lot at such a young age you, you uh, were in an abusive relationship yes and uh, you said a guardian angel saved your life tell us about that moment because that's when I read that I was like wow um it's crazy because I feel like whoever that guy was that made that call, that 911 call, was definitely my guardian angel. Whether he's really somebody on this earth, I've never seen him again. And when I was going through that situation, my window broke, and I'm looking down, I'm looking out the window, and I'm like, wow, I just got my new apartment, it's ready messed up, it's my first apartment on my own. I'm crying, and this guy that I've never seen, he just looks up at me, and he's just like, whispers to me, like, are you okay? And I look at him, I'm like, no. I was like, I'm fine, totally fine. I sat back down next to my best friend Rob. My friend was like, you have to do something. He was like, you have to do something. I was like, I can't, I don't know what to do. He was like, listen, he was like, after a while, he was like, people are gonna start feeling sorry for you. If not, they're gonna stop feeling sorry for you if you can't feel sorry for yourself. He was like, you have to do something. I did, I was about to call, make that, that special phone call, and my ex-boyfriend walked into the room before I could do it. And he was like, yo, the cops are outside. And then to my surprise, I was like, who would call the cops? I mean, it's crazy. Got a knock on the door, the cops came in, and that saved my life. And I and I owe it to that guy who ever called 911 for me because I didn't have the courage to do it myself. Being at that story is out there, and you interact with your fans. I saw you at, at the party, uh, you were interacting with everyone. Did you ever get a story where someone comes to you and they say, hey, well, you're so inspirational to me. What was that experience like? What advice do you tell them? You know, it's crazy when I do a lot of meet and greets and stuff, a lot of fans come up to me and they tell me about, you know, because it's tough right now for a lot of teenagers, like, you know, for anybody really, like going through high school and trying to fit in and, you know, a lot of people are committing suicide nowadays and you see all those videos up on YouTube and a lot of people are hurting themselves and a lot of my fans come up to me and they tell me about their life and their story, what they're going through and I just tell them, I was like, listen, no one's story is greater than the next person's. No matter what you're going through, whether it's smaller than that person's, it's, it's still a problem, it's still a big deal. I was like, I just tell them, I was like, you just have to keep your head up and even though things get rough, you have to find that balance and you have to find those people around you that'll carry you and help you. And I remember being at a party one day and some girl I've never met before knew who I was. She's like, you're Jasmine, right? And I was like, we're at a random party? I was like, yeah. And she was like, I need to talk to you. And she pulled me to the side, was talking to me about her boyfriend and about what they're going through and what are the signs. And she told me the signs. I was like, you gotta go. I was like, trust me. From somebody who's been through it and knows, I was like, you have to go before it's too late. Yeah. Now, do you put those struggles into your music? And can we expect to hear some of this stuff on your new EP? No, yes, definitely. Whatever, whenever I put out music, our songs, 
I always make sure it's something relatable that I've been through or somebody, you know, just situations I've seen along the way of if it's my friends or my family or just like situations that I feel like people would want to hear and don't know how to say it. I like putting it into my songs because then it creates that connection and it's realistic and people will be like, wow, like, I feel like she's like reading my mind. But you've been through a lot. You were, uh, you know, you were, you were friends with Bieber, Justin Bieber, mm -hmm. uh, and you felt sort of the wrath of the believers, didn't you? They came at you a little bit? I mean, you know, it was more so when I was in the baby video, that whole thing happened and, um, because the whole concept of the video was me pushing him away and a lot of the fans were like, how dare you push him away, do you know what he is? I was like, it's acting, guys, it's totally acting. But after a while, while I was on tour with him, I mean, I did get the wrath of the fans, you know, flipping me off a couple times. But I gained so many girl fans, so many genuine girl fans, and um, I learned how to, I was saying I learned how to perform love songs to nothing but girls and dads. You were on a cover of magazine with Becky G. Yes. How, how, did you guys do that photo shoot together? Yes, we did. What was that day like? Because Becky's super cool. She was in here too. She's super cool. She, it was amazing. She's super talented. I've actually, I actually knew her when we were younger, when I was 14. She's a couple years younger than me. And uh, she was always so cute, full of life all the time. She's so spicy. She's such a little girl and she had so much personality. And then I ended up running into her after a while and she just grew up so much. I'm proud of her. Mm -hmm. She's killing the game, so I'm really awesome. proud of her. What was it like the first time you actually performed the song? My managers, when she first started managing me, I was signing Dame Dash at the time. Dame Dash. <laughs> we all just did it one at a time. Um, I was signing Dame and Dash, and I had some songs that I recorded in New York, out here. And one of the songs that stood out was called Hot Like Fire. Oh my goodness, I performed for a high school show. I was on a high school tour for Power 106 and K-Day, back in LA. I mean, I didn't know how to perform at all. I didn't know what I was doing. My idol at the time, and still, it was Alicia Keys. So I would sing a snippet if I ain't got you. Oh my goodness, I used to sing that at every show. She threw me out there. I remember telling her I had a skirt on and a pro kids little jacket. And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I was 12. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. She was like, wing it. I was like, what do you mean? She was like, I'll tell you what you need to work on when, you, when you're done. I was like, crap, because these are the kids that will really tell you like, yo, you suck. So I went out there. I don't know if I felt a sense of like wanting to be Beyonce. <laughs> I just started trying to booty shake with no butt. Trying to booty shake, 12 years old, big hair, little girl, and they loved me. Mm. Uh, what would be one thing that people are, will be shocked to know about you? Because I saw another interview of yours. Mm -hmm. You said one of your favorite songs or a song you learned recently was uh, Get That Dope. You know, yeah. Get, get That Dope. Yeah. Uh, um, so what will people be shocked to know about you? People will be shocked to know about me. Um. I mean, I'm a really funny person. I feel like my, I, you know, I'm really open to my fans. So I feel like they would know that about me. But other than that, I stay home when I have when I'm not working. I'm a homebody. I stay home. I watch Netflix. I chill with my cat. I really don't go out much. People would think I would go out because you know I'm. Her cat is vicious, by the way, too. Her cat is freaking vicious. <laughs> she was singing a song and it came a little bitter. <laughs> no, it's but vicious. Actually, yeah, he is vicious. Scratch you? Scratch me right here. That's awesome. My cat is bad, but I spend most of my time with him and bite friends over. I'd rather have people over mm -hmm. than to go out. I'll go out every once in a while, but I love being home. So since you watch a lot of Netflix and you're well versed on pop culture, I'm assuming, I want to ask you some questions. Sure. Regular pop questions and see if we can um, answer them. Okay, this rapper is currently dating supermodel Chanel Iman. ASAP Rocky. ASAP Rocky is correct. Uh, she won the CFDA Fashion Icon Award. I wouldn't know that one. I wouldn't know that one either. Okay, pass. I was Rihanna. Uh, uh, I should have known that one. Where was the Fresh Prince of Bel Air originally raised? West Philadelphia. You know the song? In West, West Philadelphia, Philadelphia. Born and raised. raised. On, on the, the playground, playground is where I spent most of my days. Chilling out, max and relaxing, all cool and on suit and some b ball outside of the school. When a couple of guys, they were up to no good. Started to make a job in the neighborhood. I got one little fight and Jasmine got scared. She said, You're moving with your auntie and uncle in Bel Air. I whistled for a cab, and when it came near, the license plate said freshman and had Dyson in there. If anything, I could say that this cab was red, but I thought, Nah, forget it. You're home to Bel Air. Now singing it. I'm playing this one. I'm thirsty. I'm a little thirsty too, actually. Let's go get milkshakes. Let's do that. Good you come with me, no judgment zone? Let's go. So, do you have someone that you actually like, hey, no, that's me right there. Are you are you single now? Yeah, I'm single. You 
thing in okay. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just claiming foods now. Like this, this is me right here. Cheers. Me cheers, right cheers, there. cheers. So the dancing team, you're, you're, you're a Timberland woman. You love Tim's. I love Tim's. Are those your favorite pair of Tim's? Um, no, I actually have three pairs. Of <laughs> I have three. But other than that, I'm a sneaker girl. I love to wear sneakers. Um, I like I have a lot of sneaker wedges and stuff. I used to be comfortable Converse. And then, you know, when I go out, I'll put on my heels. Make sure they're comfortable heels because okay. I'm not the best at walking in them. So. I, I saw that. You can do the shmoney dance really good, though. You can do the shmoney dance. Great at it. So when does the EP come out? <laughs> EP comes out within the next month. Okay. And then following after that will be the album. Cool, cool. Name for the EP? Don't have one yet. Uh, okay. We, I have a thing. You should maybe name it Zilla is me. Right there. Like Zilla's mine. Right there. Right there. It has a nice ring to it. I like that. Maybe. I like that. No maybe, 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 maybe. Mm. Not gonna happen. No. <laughs> let's go back upstairs. All right, let's go. Jasmine, I know you have to go, but we're going to take it right, everyone. That's our show, folks. Join us next week when we throw spitballs and paint cans at little kids as they try to cross the street without crossing guards. What? What's up, everyone? This is Jasmine Viegas, and you are watching Global Grind TV. But usually I fall asleep early, so he like gets mad at me. He's like, every time I stay home and watch a movie with you, you fall asleep. Like they try and bust me nukes. Let's say shit from your computer. Bah, bah. <laughs>